Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera. Anda sedang menonton Agenda Awani. Dan hari ini, suatu daerah ataupun geografi di dalam uh, dunia ini yang kurang dibincangkan di Agenda Awani adalah kawasan yang membabitkan Iran. Dan sekali-sekala akan ada wakil-wakil Iran yang berada yang mempunyai kebolehan untuk berbicara dalam kepakaran bidang masing-masing. Dan hari ini, dua daripadanya sedang berada bersama dengan saya di studio dan ini mewakili satu tahap baru di mana Malaysia juga dengan perkembangan muktahir ini ingin melebarkan sayap dan juga menjalinkan hubungan yang lebih rapat dengan tamadun di Iran yang sudah sekian lama memberikan pelbagai ilmu dan kemajuan walaupun mereka dihimpit pengasingan dalam aspek ekonomi dan beberapa hal lagi di dunia sejak berdekat lamanya tapi masih lagi kemajuan sains mereka begitu menakjubkan kepada ramai pihak di dunia malah baru-baru ini Science Magazine sciencemag.org mengatakan bahawa banyak yang boleh dipelajari oleh saintis Amerika daripada saintis-saintis di Iran oleh itu hari ini saya ingin memperkenalkan tetamu saya dari Iran yang paling hujung di sana adalah Dr. Mansuri Ibrahimi Pesyarah Kanan Fakulti Tamadun Islam UTM, Universiti Teknologi Malaysia Beliau sekarang berada di sini kerana hubungan langsung Malaysia dengan Iran Kemudiannya ada rakan Dr. Fatimah Hamidifar Perunding Perancang Strategik Universiti Islam Azad di Tehran Oleh itu saya ingin meminta izin berbicara bahasa Inggeris I would like now to continue with the discussion I was just explaining to the audience here How Iran has managed to keep up its research and development of knowledge, its high uh, propensity for high technology uh, acumen among its researchers and lecturers and students, uh, despite uh, sometimes uh, being forced into isolation in many fields. So maybe now we can try to see how Malaysia and Iran can work together, especially in higher education, high technology, scientific uh, endeavors and research. Uh, maybe um, Dr. Mansuri, who's been here in UTM for quite a while, can explain to us the relationship we have right now and where next can we go with this. Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me in your program. You're welcome. Um, as uh, Dr. Fatima is our guest, UTM mm -hmm. guest. She is the director of uh, uh, IFEA. Uh, Iranian Financial Engineering Association, uh, which is the financial um, management uh, in the field of uh, investment okay. in Iranian society. So uh, the purpose of uh, uh, coming here is mm -hmm. that uh, to bring the students, new scholars okay. from IFEA, uh, most of them who are working in uh, Leasing, leasing a company and a stock market. Mm -hmm. They just uh, attended the summer course okay. in International Business School, mm -hmm. IBS, at University of Technology okay. Malaysia. Uh, yes, you're right. In terms of uh, knowledge, basic you know, theory, Iran, especially in higher education, they are very, very well knowledge. Mm -hmm. But in terms of experience, to get mm -hmm. more exposure, with, uh, I mean, international collaboration, okay. so they might need to uh, enhance the level of exposure. Mm -hmm. That's why they are here. Okay. And from my experience, being in Malaysia since 2008, I have done my PhD at UKM. Okay. Then I started my job since last year mm -hmm. at UTM. I can see the uh, lack of some mm -hmm. uh, some qualification in both sides. Okay. So. In, in, in case uh, both country can uh, fulfill the gap in the, from their country by uh, further collaboration in terms of higher education. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the key areas you think Malaysia higher from education? From Malaysia. Yeah. Specifically in Malaysia, I can, from my experience and my point of view in this society, I would suggest, let's say, in. Uh, in Medical science. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. The level of medical science here, if you compare with Iran, uh, you may say that in the technology instrument here, mm -hmm. you can find much better, mm -hmm. updated, mm -hmm. up to standard okay. of level, you know, uh, international level. But in terms of experience, 
Nobody can beat the Iranian uh, medical uh, scientists. It has been thousands of years in, in, yeah, in yeah. You know, continuity. Started from obviously now yes. you know better. Okay. But nowadays, uh, so we hope that uh, in higher education from the university, up, uh, top ranking in the mm -hmm. Malaysia, uh, we can send in, uh, new scholars mm -hmm. to get more exposure more experience to share with Iranian scientific, scientific in, okay. especially in medical okay. science. For, let's say in Iran, we started in uh, this field, the investment field, mm -hmm. to bring them here, okay. just to get, uh, I mean, experiences from uh, professors at the university, especially the University of Technology in Malaysia, mm -hmm. as a well-known university mm -hmm. in technology, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure this will help them and enhance the... Okay. Dr. Fatima, um, right now Malaysia is looking at certain issues financially. Currency, our value is going down right now and there's some pressure on it. At the same time, there's liquidity in, in the global market. There's also the capital uh, markets. At the same time also, Malaysia is trying to grow Islamic finance. Uh, in the world of finance, what do you look for from Malaysia uh, in terms of knowledge and practices to expose to your students and also university in Iran? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. First of all, I'm very grateful to give me this opportunity uh, to present uh, the, the key success of the higher education of Iran and having the chance of uh, collaboration in different scientific field mm. with the University mm. of Malaysia. And then I have to have some correction. I am the director of international relationship in IFEA, okay. not the director. So uh, in the case that you have been mentioned, um, I think the most important thing is that uh, when you set the direction of uh, any sort of progress, whether in, in finance or science, mm -hmm. and you believe in the ability of your nation, mm -hmm. uh, I think that will work and okay. you will get the result. Mm -hmm. We are living in a 21st century. The competition in off, all, you know, very, all the different mm -hmm. of uh, uh, cultural, social, and uh, economical perspective is so high. And we have a high competition from developed country through the developing country. And sometimes those countries, they always wanted this developing country to stay in the same stage of mm -hmm. being developing country okay. and never go okay. through the further stage. Mm -hmm. I think the importance of the leadership through all the aspect of uh, a nation is the most important key success. Okay. In the sense of the crisis that that mm -hmm. they have been world, you know, a global crisis mm -hmm. which had been started from okay. uh, 2008 yeah. from US mm -hmm. and yes. Europe, and then continue up to now because mm -hmm. of the competition of the different countries yes. between each other, uh, and the competition of having authority and the power of the global perspective, mm -hmm. uh, is very important for all the Islamic world yeah. that they get together. Mm -hmm and they understand each other problem mm -hmm. and they really act as a brotherhood mm -hmm. communicate, okay. community. So for these things, I think for the first um, activity, we started to bring some of our DBA students okay. in the field of financial management okay. to understand how you are practicing um, uh, Islamic banking, okay. Islamic uh, stock marketing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and then at the end, if we have working in the mutual research basis, mm -hmm. we can come up with the model that the global banking and global investment can okay. work on it. Doctor, I want to go more into that. Uh, what would be the interest and the research at your university or other universities in Iran? Looking at the global financial model, because on one hand we have the conventional model, which we know right. is is very dominant, but slowly one percent, two percent, we hope three, four, five in the future. Islamic finance is also becoming an alternative right now. Right. But maybe it doesn't have to be one or the other. It can be for the whole society of the world. Let's talk about that after this short break.
you are still watching a recording of Agenda Awani and um, I'm here with two very important higher education export of Iran to, to Malaysia, if I put it that way. Um, uh, Dr. Mansure is with us, she's working, she's working with uh, UTM, but uh, Dr. Fatima, I want to continue about, right now I'm taking a slice uh, out of higher education looking at Islamic finance, but later maybe we can go because I know that universities in Iran reports to the Ministry of Science instead of the Ministry of Education for the non-medical, but the medical ones report to the Ministry of Health and um, uh, medical education. But before we go there, a bit more about Islamic finance. Sometimes uh, people always see conventional versus Islamic finance, but Islamic finance is not just an alternative. It is a very concrete way to go that sure. is more just, that have lesser or maybe even no risk of uh, economic crisis because it's built on solid reality of uh, harta, of zakat, of everything else. So what collaborations do you think we can push further so that it's not just for research at university level, but it's for both our country's government to maybe suggest a model for the world? I think before I go to the point that you mentioned, it's very important to clarify the uh, knowledge and the science which with the title of Islam uh, is not because of Islam is a different perspective. Mm. It's because we believe that all the knowledge is coming from the Creator of Allah. Mm. So we cannot uh, segregate it from the general science that conventionally yes. or, or mm -hmm. the university. Mm -hmm. So if you have this point of view, so you can say from the perspective of Quran and Sunnah, mm -hmm. we can find many solutions through the problem of all the global society of 21st yes. century. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily specified for the Just Muslims this. community. Yep. Mm -hmm. So this is things that I always talking with the other scholar mm -hmm. that if we will able to find and localize the concept of Islamic financial or Islamic investment mm -hmm. or the way that Islam emphasize of ethical value and uh, understanding of human uh, perspective not as a tool but as a person okay. so I think most of the problem with the economy can be resolved because whatever happening during all this corruption and the mm -hmm. crisis, mm -hmm. it was because of the lack of trust. Mm -hmm. It means that it's not the benefit of the nation, but the benefit of some people. Mm -hmm. if, if, yeah, mm -hmm. if, if you just lead the concept of economy for the benefit of all nations, Justice, regardless yeah. of their geographical perspective mm -hmm. or their religious mm -hmm. or their nationality, I think the world becoming the stage that everybody can benefit mm -hmm. of uh, the resources of mm -hmm. their country. Yeah. But unfortunately, because of this polarization of some people mm -hmm. to get the most benefit of, out mm -hmm. of everything, mm -hmm. you can see that there is not the fair distribution of the resources. Yeah. Yes. So by putting the model of Islam, it's just emphasize of the value, mm -hmm. emphasize of the fairness. Yeah. And by that, I think all the nation can get benefit from the model, mm -hmm. whether it's concerning the financial and economic mm -hmm. perspective mm -hmm. or the other mm -hmm. field as well. Your expertise also deals in researching of uh, the Iranian higher education and the governance of right. it. So why is it not put under Ministry of Higher Education, like we have in Malaysia, but uh, the universities uh, they report under the supervision of Ministry of Science, Research and Technology, for example, for the non-medical ones, and the medical ones will report to the Ministry of Health and Medical Education. Mm -hmm. Why is the structure like that? Is it because uh, the research component is very important? Or how do you see it? Uh, I think one of the key factor of our success in higher education is just you pay attention to the details uh, of uh, non-medical uh, field mm -hmm. and the medical field because you know in the medical field and related uh, subject of the medical uh, you're dealing with the human health yeah. so it's, it's very important to mm -hmm. have a ministry mm -hmm. regarding to all mm -hmm. the specialized uh, 
you know, subject yes. that dealing with that and mm -hmm. the scholar who are related to that. Mm -hmm. But when it's coming to the humanity and other subject of higher education, uh, I think you, you can manage it with the, with the order of higher education organization. But the, the standard of differentiated this, this ministry mm -hmm. make emphasize of the importance of human being when yes. it's coming mm -hmm. to the health mm -hmm. care. Mm -hmm. Dr. Masri, is this a, a very fundamental difference between how universities or higher education in Iran is being governed as compared to Malaysia? They don't, Iran doesn't have a specific ministry for education. Yeah. It's under the science, uh, technology, uh, research and technology. So maybe the emphasis on science and research is uh, more Actually, upfront. we have three ministries. Okay. Yeah. Ministry of Education mm -hmm. for the schooling mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. higher schooling and mm -hmm. Ministry of Science, Research and Technology for the old institution, yeah. whether it's public or yes. non-public. So maybe that, that gives uh, um, more focus on research mm -hmm. and development in, in Iran. Uh, well, uh, as Dr. Potome mentioned, that we have three ministries already. Mm -hmm. uh, but in, you want me to explain more on the specifically the, the, the research science and, and research science part, and yeah. research technology. I can say that um, although Iran, you know, increased the level of research and um, mm -hmm. uh, technology, but you can see still lack of some uh, research base mm -hmm. in the universities. Okay. In, it's due to lack of facility, lack okay. of lab, you know, and uh, in, uh, I can say, somehow, you know, in uh, social science and humanities, mm -hmm. The level of research uh, is not exactly, you know, what practicing in the global level. Okay. So they need, you know, to train scholars in that field. And uh, that's why the yeah, this is collaboration yeah, the collaboration will help them a lot. Okay. Uh, we trying our best to train them, just to get how to okay. develop their research because. Uh, and uh, one important thing is that the language there is all Persian. Okay. Not so many young scholars would like to write it in English. Yes. But here, the strongest portion in Malaysia, English. you can see, most of them can speak English very well. They, okay. they, this is their de desire to do it in so English. So publication in English, which is important for important world ranking. Important for ranking, okay. Okay. in case you know that in yeah. Iranian, you know, most of Iranian university, you see that they have low ranking. Okay. But when we go further, you know, through their knowledge, mm. it's very high. Okay, let's <laughs> go for the last break. But once we are back, I think under the constitution of uh, Islamic Republic of Iran, education is free uh, and guaranteed to all citizens. So let's know more about that. Maybe there's a lot of people interested. And just because you cannot publish in English, maybe you're lower in ranking, but the knowledge quality is very high, technology quality is high. What are the areas that you think that are very high that Malaysia should take uh, opportunity to together partner and look forward to? That is the one we've discussed after the short break. You are still watching Gedawani. I only have a few minutes left with my special guest from Iran. And um, I would like to go to Dr. Fatima straight away because um, if you Google um, Islamic Azad University, you'll find that it is a very huge university because it has more than 1.7 million students. I think the closest we have in this country is UITM. But I don't think at any one time they have more than 1 million students. So that plus the fact that uh, education is free for all, granted under the institution. So can you explain to us a bit more about that? How, how do you look at so many students and uh, what are the system there in this particular area? So the first of all, I have to mention that uh, the percentage of, of, uh, of young people mm -hmm. between, I think, 23 to 33 in my country is about 60 percent okay. of the population of the nation. So you can understand the demand of higher education, education in this uh, era as well. 
and uh, the, mm, the expectation of the Iranian family and the caring that they have for their children mm -hmm. is so unique, okay. I think, uh, because I have been traveling all over the world mm -hmm. and I, I know that all the family are caring about mm -hmm. their children, mm -hmm. but for Iranian family it's completely different. Okay. They really want their children to be successful, to mm -hmm. get the most of whatever yeah. uh, facilities mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the country and the education is the first priority whether mm -hmm. starting from the kindergarten mm -hmm. go through the universities and mm -hmm. the postgraduate mm -hmm. uh, degree for the, their children uh, so because of this important the necessity of having more institution mm -hmm. with the uh, good ranking and the quality of presenting education and the research base is, is a fundamental mm -hmm. for the country. So you can see the Islamic Azad University is a most successful outcome of Islamic mm -hmm. revolution mm -hmm. after 1978. And during 34 years, he was very successful of mm -hmm. having more than 400 branches. Okay. And you know, every year more than 1.7 million students, mm -hmm. and I think up to now, more than four million graduate okay. students that they are working inside or outside the country. If mm -hmm. you ask uh, uh, Professor Suri yeah. and the other colleagues from UTM or other university in uh, Malaysia, you can see all the people, mostly they're coming to Malaysia. They're the Radio background Islamic education is, is, is coming from Islamic Azad University. And more and more concentration on postgraduate, not yeah, just... Now, yeah. yes. Now, because, you know, the demand of education shift through mm -hmm. the graduate students, Islamic mm -hmm. Azad University as win mm -hmm. is working so hard to make a quality of their research as well. Mm -hmm. So you can see that uh, on the ranking of times, we have... 200-something uh, as a brand of Islamic okay. Azad University and mm -hmm. each brand as well has got their their own ranking but it's a considerable mm -hmm. level mm -hmm. of uh, students that you can consider as a academic social uh, academic capital mm -hmm. of my country yes. mm -hmm. as well as the people which are very intelligent in public university mm -hmm. working so hard mm -hmm. you know the real things I think uh, through all this sanction and difficulty that my country always confronting because of uh, other countries uh, which make those problems for us is believing in people and the importance of the leadership that the setting direction and uh, you know making uh, the the system in a way that they can prove more themselves harder, yes. that Achieve more. if yeah okay. if they believe that they can you can okay. see in the reality yes. that they they get to that point. I want to speak uh, next time to the university that looks at movie and creative content also, because sure. it's not just in high technology, yeah, sure. physics and medicine, in but science, also arts, in social arts, social sciences and arts. Right. Dr. Mansouri will have to come again. Sure. And we have to bring another guest also from Iran. We want this to continue Inshallah. because there's a lot of uh, potential. Sure. And you know, we are all brothers and sisters anyway in the world. So let's match our knowledge together and make the world a better Inshallah. place. Thank you so much for making time. Thank to be you on for having me. Thank you. Uh, terima kasih banyak kepada anda telah menonton. Hantarkan pandangan anda sendiri kepada pelbagai platform yang Isra Awani ada. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram ataupun terus buat turun aplikasi Mudali iOS dan Android supaya anda boleh menonton dan memberikan pendapat anda secara langsung di gadget kegemaran anda. Sekian, selamat malam dan insyaAllah kita jumpa lagi.